Welcome to Tips with Andrew. I am Andrew Sapiano. Thank you so much for joining me on this happy Saturday. I hope you guys are having an awesome start to your weekend so far and are rocking it out, getting rested and recovered for the amazing week that we're going to have ahead. Um, quickly, before we get started, there is still time to get the Motivate Touch Blend from doTERRA for free. Um, tomorrow is the last day, so definitely today and tomorrow is the days that you need to reach out. Uh, doTERRA Motivate Touch provides gentle and quick application of doTERRA Motivate Mint and Citrus Essential Oil Blend. The fresh minty aroma promotes feelings of confidence, courage, and belief. We all have setbacks in our lives causing us to doubt ourselves or feel pessimistic. Doterra Motivate Touch will help you unleash your creative powers and find the courage that comes from believing in yourself again. Oh yeah. I actually love the touch uh, version of the oil just like that. Comes with the roller top just on the top here instead of the dropper bottle. Uh, and that one makes it great for, it, it makes it easier application uh, for, um, it's, uh, for example at work or you know throughout the day as opposed to bringing out the oil and then dropping it on so definitely um if you or somebody you know of needs a little bit more uh, motivation encouragement especially nowadays uh definitely reach out to me drop me a comment send me a message we'll get you rocking and rolling next i have launched a weight loss course for beginners it is an online digital course for download discover five little known secrets on how to lose weight if you or somebody you know of is interested in learning or in, in losing, sorry, um, a few pounds now that the summer months are officially upon us, definitely reach out to me, drop me a comment, send me a message. We'll get you rocking and rolling. There's tons of cool stuff that comes along with the initial launch, and I'm super excited to get it out there. I know people are going to love it. Um, next, convention tickets for doTERRA are on sale now. Um, the event is in September on the 8th and so it is a little bit less than a month away it's about a week-long event there's so much cool stuff going on um, education learning about the essential oils different researches new products releases exclusive products that aren't normally for resale that's what really gets me excited um, inspiration view the, um, the, the future of doTERRA and the world of essential oils be the first to know about big announcements. That's another cool thing. Big announcements for the year ahead. Uh, inspiration, oh, sorry, and much more. Um, doTERRA's initiatives, the marketplace, there's parties going on. It's going to be such a cool time. Um, it's going to be held in person in Utah. Uh, it's also going to be a live stream event. That's the one that I'm super excited about. And so if you or somebody you know of is interested in learning more about the doTERRA community, essential oils in general, um, why the oils work with us, the ways that they work with us, different ways to reduce toxic, the toxicity levels in your life. Definitely, this is not an event that you want to miss. I'm super excited for it, and I know that it's going to change a lot of people's lives. So definitely, tickets are still available. Reach out to me, drop me a comment, send me a message. You do not want to miss this event. It's going to be so much fun. I'm super excited. I can't, I actually did the math and it's a little bit over three weeks away and I'm so excited. I can't wait. I, I got, I got holidays booked off at work, right? Everything. It's amazing. All right. Okay. <laughs> That's where I'm going to cap that at today. We are going to get, so let's get in. I'm telling you, <laughs> there's so much more going on over here. Such a cool time to be alive, but let's get into today's topic. So we did the, the DIYs the last couple days. That's a, what a fun time. I love doing DIYs. People get so excited. Uh, do it yourself stuff, right? It's amazing. Can you, and, and it just gives you a, a, a little way to experiment with the oils. Uh, in a way that you wouldn't normally do it. You just kind of make your own creations and go with it. I love it. I love it, and I love the experimentation process of it. So today, we're actually going to do a little bit differently than what we normally do. Uh, we did this, so we did one of these a little bit ago, but it's today is actually National Garage Sale Day. So what I wanted to talk about was a little bit about ways, some saving tips on how to reduce the, the debt load in your life and how to have more money than you can ever imagine and do all the things that you would love to do if you just had a little bit more money. Um, that's where I want to come on, give some tips that help me 
save a little bit more money um, than I normally would and, you know, get me, get myself a little bit out of the hole that we've been in or that we've dug ourselves in, right? Not, uh, right, it was, you know, it, it's, it's the same thing, I think, for everybody, more or less, right? A little bit frivolous spending, a little bit uh, too much month at the end of the money, um, you know, we want stuff that we can't have and that's where, you know, it piles up, right? Stuff happens, life happens, everything, whatever, it is what it is. Now we're learning how to get, reduce that debt load and have a little bit of extra money uh, while we're at it, right? So let's get into, I guess, what we'll get into to my tips that help me. Uh, I want to share them with you. Hopefully they help you too. Hopefully you get some value out of them, right? Hopefully they get you on the road to saving a little bit of money and uh, you know having a little bit more in the bank at the end of the month. So before we get started, I want to talk about two different books that I read that completely changed not only my view on how to save money, uh, but also um, <laughs> my bank account overall, right? So the first, the first book that I have here is a book called The Richest Man in Babylon. And this one talks a lot about how to, it's actually the world's favorite inspirational guide to managing wealth, right? So it, it kind of talks about um, Babylon used to be an ancient city, right? So they talked about how this uh, ancient city of uh, wealth and riches came to be and all sorts of things. But it, it talks a lot a bit uh, about, you know, automating your savings and the way, actually one of the ones that it, it really stuck out to me was it talks to, about debt as a, an enemy, right? And you would never let your enemy win. You would never let your enemy come at you and, you know, take over your house, your place of residence, no, or hurt your family, right? Not a chance would and you ever let that happen to you. So that's the way you should think about debt. And that, you know, once I started thinking about it that way, that really, you know, completely changed my thought process. But the other book that I have here is a book called Think and Grow Rich. It was originally written by Napoleon Hill. Let's see if they have it when it was written. It was a long time ago. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Originally published in 1937. <laughs> so almost a hundred years ago, and this is still one of the most amazing books that you can find on, uh, <clears throat> on you know, riches, wealth, the entire subject. And that's what I thought, right? Think and Grow Rich, that sounds like something that I could get on board with, right? I, I don't know, that sounds like an interesting... Now, I mean, the way I like using this, this is not my quote, but there is some weird things in the book, right? And you don't have to do the weird things, but it is, it is, those are, those are two books that really helped me sort of change my thought process on how to deal with money. I was very, you know, I've been very bad my whole, almost my whole life, right? I, uh, money, I get money and it just burns a hole in my pocket. I want to buy everything. And, uh, you know, as much as it makes me feel good at the time, there's not a whole lot left at the, uh, at the end when we try to, uh, uh, get a little bit ahead of the game. So, Definitely, I highly suggest reading both of those books. If you can only get, you know, if you can only get one of them, right? And, and the, this is the way that I was explained about these books, right? This one right here is $13.50, <laughs> right? $13 for this book. This one here is, is it going to tell me? No, it won't. Ah, right, $10, $9.99. <laughs> So here we go, $9.99 and $13.50. So for $22.50, you can buy two books that are going to help you save money and get a little bit ahead of the game. And I promise you that that, that $10 investment right there has led to thousands of dollars in savings for me. So, I mean, right away, that, uh, that book has paid off for itself. And I didn't even think about that until I just looked at the number there. So that really, those are the two books that I would suggest more than anything. All right, so let's get into some tips that help me and hopefully they help you too. Let's get right on it. So today being garage sale day, I thought my first tip should be, well, you know, look at a garage sale. And especially nowadays, we've got Facebook Marketplace, um, Kijiji, uh, to a certain extent Craigslist. There's so many different online ways to market your stuff. Uh, and and it, especially, you know, and there is still uh, regular garage sales. I'm looking at something that we have in the kitchen right now. 
that uh, we bought at a garage sale and it is actually become a prevalent thing in our kitchen and I don't really understand how we lived before we had that, to be honest. And I think that thing cost us like maybe 20 bucks and I think we only gave them 20 bucks because that's they they did they wanted less and we were like, wow, come on, man, you... <laughs> That's that's a cool that's a cool table thing. It's a, a little countertop that we've got. But garage sales are a great way to help not pay full price for things. And really, when you go to a garage sale, you know when you have a garage sale for yourself, you're basically just looking to get rid of things, right? You're not looking, you know, more or less to make money. You're looking to just get rid of things. And that's the same with other people when they have sales. They're just looking to get rid of things. They're not actually looking to, you know, make money off of it because they're not actually going to make a whole lot of money. So that's why you can you can get really good stuff for really discounted prices. Um, to a certain extent, I, I I used to work at the Salvation Army, Salvation Army, Value Village, uh, places like that where our those are discounted retail stores that you know people get rid of some cool stuff. I can say that firsthand. I used to work there. They, there's some cool stuff that people get rid of and stuff that's worth a lot of money that people are just, there's, a, you know, the old saying rings true, right? One man's trash is another man's treasure. So one person doesn't really feel the that there's any value in this particular item, whatever it may be. And another person thinks that this is the best thing that they've ever had in their life and don't actually realize how they lived before they had it, right? So... That's why garage sales are a great way to save a little bit of money on regular stuff that you wouldn't, that, you know, they, that's going to cost you a little bit more. Um, Facebook Marketplace has become a thing where we not only buy, but do sell some of our stuff, right? So stuff that we're looking to get rid of, we'll put on Facebook Marketplace and, uh, and, and, and sell it that way. And we'll also be looking to buy things off people. We just bought a, uh, a, a mini dishwasher for our apartment building that we, uh, and, and I couldn't find it anywhere for any sort of cheap price. And uh, you know, all the all the stores were more or less the same price. And then I found some lady that uh, she, they, it was just in storage and they were just looking to get rid of it as opposed to make money. And I actually saw it for half the price that I was gonna pay in store for it. So that's, <laughs> I mean, that's saving some money right there. And actually I love this, um, Example, as much as I, I, you know, it's become kind of a joke in our household, there was one time where we spent basically all of our money at uh, Bath and Body Works. And then when we got the bill, the first thing out of Tina's mouth was, wow, but look at how much money you saved. <laughs> and it laugh, I laugh at that all the time now. At the beginning, you know, when I first was there, it was like, oh, yeah, totally. That's what I'm thinking now. But we laugh at that nowadays. We, you know, we can laugh at that now. Um, but that's really it, right? As much as you spend, you do need to look at what you saved. And a lot of times, I mean, for me in particular, when I, I, I'm a sucker for a sale, right? So if, if there's anything that's like, I, I'm looking at something right now, actually in the Canadian Tire Flyer that I don't know that I need, but it's like 70% discounted. And I'm very much thinking about buying it, right? It's just one of those things that, uh, that way, when it's on sale, it's just really hard to, uh, to pass up, right? Number two, get it automated. Get your savings automated. That's one of the things that the Richest Man in Babylon book really taught me is to automate my savings. When you get it automated, when you have it come, and this is what I mean by automated, is to have it come directly off your check and put into a savings account. And that way, you don't. it, it comes right off your check you don't ever have to look at it because it is a lot of, you know, it's it's really hard for us to go, um, you know, to get our money, to pay back all of our bills, to buy the stuff that we want and still have money at the end of it in order to put towards a savings account or to pay down debt or whatever we want to use that for, right? That's why we need to get it automated. And I can promise you that since I've got it automated for me, I don't even think about it anymore nor do I even miss the money on my paycheck. There was a long while where I didn't even realize where, you know, there was a little bit where I was like, okay, maybe I got to adjust to this. But, you know, after the first couple of weeks, um, you know, maybe month, there, uh, I, did, I, I don't notice the money coming off my check. Now, it's not like a huge chunk, don't get me wrong, but I don't notice that little bit of money coming off my check. And all it's doing is just going into a savings account, 
building interest up and becoming and and may and working for me right my money is making money so i don't even have to make more money because my money is making money that's the best part about a savings account right there getting it automated i can promise you is the most important thing that you can do for yourself because it is so hard for us to pay all of our stuff and still have money left at the end of it. But when you get it automated and it comes right off your check and you don't even have to look at it, nor do you even notice that it's there, then that's when it, that's when you, that's when you don't notice, but your savings account starts really growing. And for me, like last year when we went down uh, throughout the pandemic, that, um, you know, my, my automatic or my automated savings account was basically what we lived off of you know, a little bit of unemployment here and there, but you know, basically it was my savings that we were able to live off of because I had had it automated for so long and never really needed to touch it. And, uh, and, and it was, it, it was, you know, it was actually really, you know, it was really an amazing feeling to know that I had done that without even knowing it, right? I didn't even notice any of that money coming off my check and it just built up in a savings account to the point where we, you know, it was, <laughs> they talk about a rainy day fund, quote unquote, right? That's what we needed it. You know, last year was a lot of people's rainy days and, uh, you know, that's where it came. It, it was, it was a godsend for us. Number three, pay back little debt first. So for us, it was, we, again, I, I have a hard time not signing up for those credit card deals. Uh, we go to, we used to go to Jay's games a lot, uh, and they make it so awesome, right? You, you sign up for this credit card thing and you get a whole bunch of free stuff. And you go to, you know, Walmart or whatever, and you sign up for the credit card, you get 30% off your bill. And then that for me was real, it, it was a, a real, you know, kick in the you know what, when I had to actually face the facts of what happened, right? When you get a lot of, when you get a lot of different credit cards and you're falling a lot behind in your bills and, you know, you're paying this credit card with this credit card and, and then you get a new credit card to pay back that credit card and you're, you're just transferring your debt from one card to another. It can be very hard to stay on top of things. And for me, that's really what happened to me. Uh, I, you know, I had a bunch of different cards um, and then I had, you know, and then we had the, 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 the card, the, we have our car payment, right? We have rent to pay, phone bills, all sorts of different things that, that we still had to pay. But for me, I, you know, I had, I still had a bunch of credit cards that, that needed to happen. And like, that was really, uh, and, you know, an eye opener for me, but that's actually what, um, it was Tina that explained this strategy to me because when you pay down a little debt first, it just gets something out of the way. And it, it's sort of like crossing something off your checklist, right? Like if you, if you've got things on your checklist and you start crossing things off, it's going to make it that much more easier for you to keep going on your checklist, right? You're going to want to do more. You're going to want to, uh, um, you know, have more things cross off your checklist because you're, you're motivated to keep doing that. That's the way that you have to think about your little bit of amount of debt first, right? So if you've got, um, you know, one credit card that's say a thousand dollars and one credit card that's say 5,000 and one that's say 10,000, I don't know, I'm just making up numbers here. Um, but you know, if you were to have the 1,000 and the 5,000 credit card, and you're trying to pay back this $10,000 balance, <laughs> that can be a lot, right? And it, and it can be, it, and that's when you're just, um, you're, you're paying more than you really need to. But when you, you get rid of that one bill, the $1,000 one, and then you can just have that not even, you're, 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 you have that one dealt with, it's not even a problem anymore, it's not even an issue, you're not even thinking about it anymore. That's when you get the motivation to keep going. Now you hit that next milestone. Once you hit that next milestone, then you've only got one more milestone to achieve, right? And that's when that's when it really starts to get exciting. When you can see the light at the end of the tunnel, trust me, I will be the first to tell you that it is a very dark and lonely tunnel down there. But when you can start to see the light at the end of it and you can actually see you got a plan in place to figure it out, it's so much easier on every aspect of your life. Number four, use coupons. Coupons are a great one. Uh, I now there is a lot. I, I believe there's a term called extreme couponing, which is nuts. But I mean, it, it, if anything, those people get paid to do grocery shop, right? They get paid to buy things because they're you know a coupon for this, and then use the points for that, and then 
get the points from here and then transfer the points over from here. But that's, you know, that's, that's really what it is. There's an app nowadays called the Flip App where you don't even have to actually get the paper coupons. You can just use the Flip App. I'm sure there's a, a, a couple more apps out there that I don't know about, but that's the one that I do know about because that one's the most prevalent at this point, moment, right? The Flip App is a great way to help and actually, the flip app is really cool because you just type in whatever you're looking for, right? Hot dog buns, cereal, butter, toilet paper, right? Whatever you're trying to buy, and it will actually show you every store that sells that, and it will show you all of the different prices so that you can compare which store you actually want to go to. And it also makes it easier to do your grocery shopping. That's what Tina and I, we find, uh, when we find stores that are, you know, have the most, with the majority of the coupons, right? I don't know, Walmart, uh, Superstore, No Frills, right? Whatever store it ends up being has the most coupons that we're seeing. We tend to just pick that store because, you know, we're, we're more or less doing, uh, getting the savings, right? Maybe we're paying a little bit more for something, but more more often than, or more things than not are gonna be super discounted, right? So coupons are, you know, the way to get things for a discounted price. I don't know, I, I haven't really met anybody that doesn't like coupons, but I have met some people that are extreme with it, right? So you can be an extreme couponer and then you get paid for it, but that to me sounds like a lot of work. I would just rather take the little bit of savings that I get from the coupons and then use it that way. So that's, that's another way. Coupons are just a, a great way to not spend all of your money, but to actually get the stuff that you need for a discounted price. Also, using coupons, certain stores now, they do price match. Um, and I know like a lot of stores don't, but some stores do. They do the price match, and uh, that way you can take a coupon from one store that is selling something different and match that price and get that same thing from a different store for a less price. So it's a great way to, uh, to help spend less money. Side note, water. Always be drinking your water. Helps with all of your bodily functions. It helps actually keep you, <laughs> keep you sane when you're trying to save money. So we are talking today on Garage Sale Day, different ways, top saving tips on how to get out of debt and help you have more money than you can ever imagine. Number one, attend a garage sale or do some sort of online shopping where you are buying something off another person as opposed to a company. Number two, get your savings account automated. Take it right off your check. Number three, pay your little bit of debt first and then tackle your bigger mountains. Number four, use coupons to get a little bit of savings. Number five, pack your own lunch. There's a, a TikTok sound going on around now that I hear a lot of on Tina's feed that um, it's uh, spending money on fast food every day is still spending money. And I can believe that, right? I, I like listen, I, or I like talking about this one because especially for me, right? I can eat. <laughs> I like me some food and, and you know, I, I, I do like eating <laughs> a lot. So for me, I can really uh, pack up the bill, we'll call it. And, but that's the thing, right? Like if you go to a fast food place, I'm just thinking of something off the top of my head. Like even if you were to go to Subway or something where you get a foot long sub, that's still like eight, nine dollars, right? So eight dollars times five days a week is forty dollars, <laughs> right? This is where I laugh all the time at, um, you know, at, at people that say that they, they don't have money to do anything, right? You don't have money, but you have $40 a week uh, times four uh, weeks in the month, 160 extra dollars to eat Subway every day, right? I'm just, I don't mean to pick on Subway, but <laughs> you catch my drift, right? If you're spending eight to you know $12, about $10 every meal, because that's what it is, right? Fast food is not cheap. And it's not, there's not really too much that you can buy for less than, you know, eight, ten dollars, if you will, right? So if we're spending, you know, 40, 50 bucks a week, uh, 160 to 200 dollars every month times 12, right? If we'll do uh, 200 dollars a month times 12 is actually 2,400 dollars a year <laughs> that you're spending just on one meal for fa uh, on, on food, right? So that's where packing your old lunch is really, it's, it's actually, it's beneficial in a plethora of ways, right? Number one, it helps you to save money because you don't spend money on fast food every day. 
Number two, it helps you really prioritize your grocery shops because you're meal planning for the week. Number three, it also helps you to realize what or what you're actually putting in your food so that you're not you know, buying processed junk. Uh, you can have um, your, your, your fruits, your vegetables, you can have your greens, you can have your fiber, you can have your all almonds, right? You can have your protein, you can have your snacks, no matter what. But when you pack your lunch, you know what's going into it. You're not relying on trying to find some, you know, health place that is not, you know it's probably not going to taste good, but it is, is you know, going to be really healthy for you. Outside of like booster juice, right? I can handle booster juice. But even still, right? That's something that's, you know, five, six, seven dollars every day. So packing your own lunch is a great way to help you, uh, just to help you build habits as to not spending money. That's my next tip. Check your spending habits. If you're spending money every day on fast food, buying lunch, um, you know, if you buy Tim Hortons and a bagel every morning before you go to work, if you're buying Starbucks on your way home, uh, you know, they, these are little spending habits that can add up. If you um, are like me and don't really like looking at the credit card bill and you just kind of spend until it tells you that you're cut off, <laughs> that, uh, you know, that, that's, that's another way that you could do it, but I don't suggest that. It's not a very good thing, but that's what really what we need to do, right? We need to check our regular, the little habits that we do. For me, I really took an, a, a huge interest in this and I started writing down every time I spend money. Writing down every time you spend money, it does a couple different things for you. It helps you to realize where your money is going, but it also helps you to eat better and it helps you to cut down on the fast food because you don't want to be writing that you ate fast food all day every day. You also don't want to be writing that you're spending money on things that you don't need to spend your money on. And it just helps you in that way to you know keep yourself accountable. That's really what it is. I get it. I, I do get it. Life is hard and you know we don't always want to do the right thing as much as we know we should. But that's where we need to make a conscious effort to know to, to realize what we're spending our money on and how we can change those habits. My last tip more than anything is essential oils. And I have a couple different oils here. The first one is uh, bergamot. And bergamot oil is actually known as the oil of self-love. And I mean, when you're trying to check your spending habits, what are my tips here? <laughs> when you're using coupons, when you're trying to get your debt down, right? A little bit of self-love. When you're trying to keep yourself accountable, you need that little bit of self-love because it can be, you know, we can be very hard on ourselves for our spending habits. I mean, you know, as much as we can be our biggest cheerleaders, we can also be our biggest critics, right? So we can really be a lot harder on ourselves than we will anybody else in our life. So that's why we need to promote a little bit of self-love help calm ourselves down a little bit. My next oil here is basil. And basil actually promotes stimulation in your mind with your senses, right? And so when you're trying to think of different ways, right, different ideas on how you're going to save a little bit of money, on how you're going to do things differently, you want your mind stimulated, your senses stimulated so you get a few different ideas. My last blend here is balance. And balance is the grounding blend from doTERRA. And right, when we're trying to you know, get out of our old habits and step into a new life and be rich and, 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 you know, be the persona of the rich person that we want to embody, the person with money that doesn't have to worry about anything. We, we need to ground our emotions a little bit. We need to, you know, just know that, that we have a resting place where we can rise up, right? And we can, we can really focus on, on, on all of our goals and just making it happen. That's all I got for you for today. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this. I know I had some fun making it. Like I said, it's a little bit different than we normally do over here. Uh, feel free to share this with your friends, a family member, perhaps somebody from your team that you feel needs to hear this, anybody that you feel needs to get out of debt, right, or have a little bit of extra money. Um, if you'd like to learn more about essential oils or how to get your hands on some of this cool stuff that I'm talking about, or if you'd like a free sample of oils, just to get your hands on a little taste tester before you make a full-on commitment, definitely reach out to me, drop me a comment, send me a message saying me, and we'll get you rocking and rolling. Thank you so much for joining me. I really hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and an even better weekend, and I look very forward to talking to you again. I love you guys. Bye for now.